mercy from the throne. The death brought life, he conquered all. Jesus, redemption song, the blood that flowed, washed my sins whiter than the snow. Your lavish love is all I know. Jesus, redemption song. So strong, mercy from the throne, death brought life, he conquered all, Jesus. If the redeemed of the Lord say so, we will sing your song forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. say so. We will sing your song forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Good day, everyone, and welcome to our online service here at Every Nation Melbourne North East. I'm Pastor Larry, and it's great to have you with us in our service today. Well, this is the first Sunday in June, and it's officially winter here in Melbourne. Man, it's getting so cold. But that's the fun thing about being here in Melbourne. Really, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, sometimes it's hailing, sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's sunny, and sometimes it's super cold. So that's really fun here in Melbourne. Well, here in Melbourne, our vision is to love God, love people, and to serve the nations. And one way we love people is through the, our life groups, and we have them all over the city. And this is really where you get the prayer support and the encouragement in the Word that we all need. And I want to encourage you. Um, we are not called to be alone. You know, God has called us to uh, live together and, and pray for one another, encourage one another especially in times that we're living today. Uh, so um, just message us if you uh, would like to join any of our, our groups and we can get you in one that's near you. And also if you're here in Melbourne um, and you'd like to join our live service, we have them every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. at Belfield Community Hall. And so please feel free to, to join us. Um, you can also go to our website at everynation.org.au to find directions uh, to get to our uh, service. Uh, an exciting thing that's happening next Sunday is that we're having a three-on-three -three, um, basketball time together and for men and women. You can feel free to join us and it's going to be a fun time together. Just message us if you'd like to join us and you know we're inspired by the NBA Finals. Come on, we're going to play like the Golden State Warriors. Yeah! Okay, oh, pray they win. Okay, all right, so it's going to be a fun time together. Well, uh, we're officially making two years as a church, and so we're celebrating with our second church camp, and this will be on October 21st to 23rd. And if you'd like to join us, just go register at our website at everynation.org.au, and you and, um, can uh, join us for our, our, our church camp at Yara Glen uh, Youth Camp. It's going to be a fun time together. We've got great speakers. we got... Um, a great time of worship together and fun and games and man it's just been a, a really fun time uh, getting to know one another. Well for our offering verse today I wanted to read this verse in Psalm 34 10 
It says, The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And I want to encourage you that the Lord will knows all that we need. And as we trust in Him, He will give us what we need to live this life. And so we're not going to lack any good thing. And, you know, a scripture that keeps coming to my mind is, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Ooh, so trust in the Lord. Come on. And the Lord will provide for us. Well, let me just pray for us. Father, I just thank you so much, Lord God, for this opportunity we have to worship you in giving. I thank you for those, Lord, that participate together with us in this way. And thank you for those that... Lord, even um, support the church in this way too. And, and God, I just th thank you for your word that reminds us that um, when we trust in you, we're not going to lack any good thing. So we thank you, Lord, that you're our provider. We thank you that you're here with us and for us. And you know our needs and our, our things, that, the things that we are going through right now. So Lord, I pray that you would um, even minister to the areas of our life I pray healing, Lord. I pray even for peace in the midst of the storms that we're facing. I thank you, Lord God, that you're in control. So, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for just your peace and your healing and your protection on our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping the Lord together with us and giving. And our information, uh, bank information is there on the screen. And now we want to worship the Lord in song. And I want to invite you, uh, wherever we are watching this service, let's worship Him in spirit and in truth and invite His presence to fill our rooms, our hearts uh, with His love. Amen. Let's worship together. Every star you know by name with one breath Oh, life begins from the beginning until the end. You're the one foundation. You shaped me inside and out. You made me to be all about. About you, what can I do without? And you love 
Today we are coming to the end of our series that we have called Living a Victorious Life. And I hope that you've really been encouraged in this series. And, and next week uh, we are concluding with actually talking about the Holy Spirit, which is actually the seal that will help us you know, the, to really live this victorious life. Uh, today I, I wanted to start with just an interesting story uh, personally in our own life. In 2014, uh, Elaine and I were had opportunity to go to a conference in every nation in in our church in Dubai, and when we were there, we got to go to one of the tallest buildings and called the Burj Khalifa. So we went up to go see the sights of the city in in Dubai. We were really excited about this. We had to wake up really early and and go up and and when we went up uh, to look at the view of the city. Uh, this was our view. <laughs> it was only the top of buildings because it was covered with fog. And we were so disappointed. Uh, I was feeling like I wanted to go back and, and ask for a refund um, because we couldn't see anything. And when I was uh, talking to one of the guys that worked there, I said, you know, are you guys going to refund us because we don't have a view? <laughs> and he says, don't you know that this only happens once or twice in a year? This is a rare phenomenon, you know, that uh, you can see. It's like you're only you're looking above the clouds um, at the city. And he says, actually, this is a very rare experience. And, and then I, when I looked around and I was looking at everybody, everybody was so excited. They were taking pictures. They were saying, wow, this is so amazing. This is so, so amazing. And so... My disappointment turned into an excitement. And so, of course, Elaine and I took a picture above the clouds. <laughs> and we have a memory that we'll remember forever. And it kind of reminded me of sometimes in our life where we go through experiences where it's seemingly very difficult or makes us feel unhappy. We feel cheated, disappointed, and we grumble and complain about it. And then we, little do we realize that actually the Lord was using that to teach us, you know, a huge lesson to build our faith. You know, I'm reminded of scripture where it says, count it all joy when you face various trials. The testing of your faith produces perseverance. So many times in our life, we don't understand the seasons that we go through, but the Lord uses it to really grow us. I'm reminded of John 16, 33. It says, I have said these things to you that in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And so I really wanted to start the service to really encourage us in the time that we're living today, of course we're gonna go through difficult seasons, and, and yeah, maybe it's not gonna be the way that we expected. Why, why did the sickness come upon us? Or why did we lose our jobs? Or, or why are things happening the way they are, and we cannot plan properly for the future? We don't understand. But we are comforted to know that the Lord overcame the world and he's with us and for us and he's in control. So we can have peace knowing that the Lord has things in store for us for the future. And so I want to encourage us in Galatians 5.1, it says, For it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and, then and do not let yourselves be burdened again with the yoke of slavery. So the reason why Jesus came was to destroy the works of the evil one, to really set us free, to help us live a life of victory. So if Jesus came to, to help us live this victorious life, then don't go back into the worldly past or how we used to live and behave or even think the Lord is with us and for us. And so that is really the promise that we can carry in this life is that the Lord has given us everything we need to live this life of victory. So let's continue to, to, continue to fight for it and believe for it. Well, we've been going through topics in this series and we talked about the power to transform. We talked about the power of the cross. We talked about identify to solidify to multiply, basically finding our identity in Christ. We talked about victory over generational curses, victory over spiritual error, victory over relational dysfunctions. And last week we talked about victory over worldly carnality. And we really been encouraging you in scripture and the word that victory is possible in the name of Jesus. And why is 
why do we need to continually walk in victory is that we know that the enemy will try to you know attack us to try to hit us to try to get us to go back to the past and in Matthew 12 43 to 44 it says when an impure spirit comes out of a person it goes through an arid places seeking rest and it does not find it then it says I will return to the house that I left when it arrives it finds a house unoccupied swept clean and put in order then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they will go in and live there and the final condition of that person is worse than the first that is how it will be with the with this wicked generation so the encouragement of the word is that we've got to be on guard and we've got to be careful the enemy is so sly and subtle he will try to try to attack us again and you know if he can attack us again and he will try to build that whole uh, sinful nature again and try to you know go us, get us to go back to the past and those strongholds that were holding us back before will try to get the better of us and so that it will be so difficult to overcome and so that's why it's so important that we continually fight for our victory continually um, walk in, in in righteousness and so today um, I wanted to topic title this uh, message uh, the ABCs to victory and and I'm not trying to downplay um, what we're going through in our life or the attacks the enemy throws at us but I'm trying to encourage us that the Lord has given us the tools that we need to walk in victory and so let me open in prayer father I just pray that you would uh, encourage us in your word I pray for an anointing in our ears and our hearts to receive all that you have for us now Lord God I pray Lord God, that you would use this word to help us, Lord God, walk in victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the ABCs to victory. The first one is abide in Christ. In John 15, 5 and 6, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. The first most important thing is that in order for us to walk in our victory, we have to abide in Christ on a daily basis. Abiding, living, growing, connecting with Christ in any relationship. What's the first and most important thing? is communication right and so how we communicate with God is through prayer in John 16 24 it says until now you have asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full there is something significant when we pray it moves the heart of God and and God answers prayer is so key and important you know God can do anything but it's almost like he's waiting for us to pray to ask to believe, you know, to step out and, 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 and intercede on behalf of, of others, but also pray and communicate to him. He's waiting to hear us. That's why that's so important in, in terms of abiding in Christ, we have to connect with him every day in prayer. That's so important. Pray on the bus, pray on the train, pray on the car, pray on, on the way to work and to school. We need to just communicate with him. You know, I just do that. I'm talking to God underneath, you know, quietly to myself. I'm, I'm, I'm running, I'm walking, I'm doing whatever I need to do. I'm just praying to God, Lord, thank you. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Thank you, Lord, you're with me, you're here for me. And I'm just praying on a continual basis. Be people of prayer. That builds our communication with God. It builds our awareness that he is real, he's with us. The next one is that we need to know him. How do we know him? It's through the word, through his word. And, and so we need to read his word. In Psalm 119, 11, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. How do we know God? We need to read his word on a daily basis. So if you're not reading, listen to the Bible app. The Bible, the, the great thing about the YouVersion Bible app is it can play the scripture to, uh, to you. Play it, listen to it, read it. 
Get the word in your heart every day. Why? Because we're bombarded with the world on a daily basis. We need the word to remind us that how to live and, and, and how to act. It, it's that measuring rod to, how to, to live our life. And so we need the word of God. The last one is that we need to obey the word of God. In John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. So we need to read, meditate, and live it out. Meditate, chew on it, chew on the word. Oh Lord, what does that scripture mean to me? How can I live this out? Oh, how can I serve others? How can I love others? How can I pray for others? How can I encourage others? So we're living out the Word of God. That's how we obey the Word of God. That's how we abide. And last week I talked about another way to abide is just to stay thankful. In Romans 1, Paul addresses that to the church and he says there were some that forgot God and forgot to stay thankful. You know, we need to be thankful people all the time. Thank you, Lord, not only for the food, but we're thanking the Lord for our jobs, for our family, for our health. We're thanking the Lord all the time. We need to stay thankful because we're, when we do, we're making ourselves aware that it's God as our provider. It's God that is leading. It's God that is directing our lives. So in Romans 1, it says, For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him nor gave thanks to Him, but their, their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So when you stop acknowledging and thanking God, you're going to think, oh, it's me. It's, it's my plan. It's my wisdom. That's how I'm, I'm providing and, and getting promoted. So we have to acknowledge, no, it's always God. It's God. Otherwise, our minds will continually be selfish and sinful. Always acknowledge God. And another thing how we abide is that we love him. Love him with all of our heart. The greatest commandment, Jesus says, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love him. Learn to love him more. I like this verse in Matthew 6, 24. It says, and, and 21, it says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and, and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so the enemy will try to steal our heart through career, through money, all these things. And so we need to always guard our heart. Don't let your heart be pulled away by relationships, by, by money, by all these things, the fame, fortune, all that. Okay, love God. That's how you abide in, in Christ. I, I like this in, in Romans 8. Apostle Paul went through so much beatings, whipping, uh, shipwrecks, stonings. I mean, he, he had opportunity to hate God, to, to cry out and say, God, why did you allow this to happen to me? But he said this in Romans 8, 37 to 39, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, or any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It didn't matter all the things that he went through. What mattered is that God loves him. And because he knew that God loves him, he was able to endure all that punishment or trials and hardships that he went through. And so I want to encourage all of us what helps me in my life is I remember that Jesus went to the cross for me. I remember that he loves me so much. I was such a wicked, sinful person. And because he forgave me and he loved me and he paid the price for me on the cross, man, I want to serve him. I want to live for him. And so abiding in Christ is so important to walk in our victory. Whenever I'm facing a hard time, I'm remembering what Jesus did for me. I'm remembering how much he loves me, how much he's for me. And so that helps me to persevere and to love what he loves and hate what he hates. The second one is that we need to believe. So A is abide in Christ. B is believe in faith. In Romans 4.18, it reminds us of Abraham. Abraham uh, was spoken that he would be a father of many nations, but yet he didn't have children. 
and he didn't have children until a very old age he started having. And it says, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so it became he became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. So we know that Abraham waited, I think it was 25 years before he had a, ch a son, and he believed in faith. Now, many of us are uh, believing in faith for things. Uh, we're praying. Some of us are battling with, with uh, areas of our life, strongholds that we're needing a breakthrough in for years. I want to encourage you, believe in faith. Abraham held on and believed, and he saw the miracle of his son being born. It's only a matter of time. How are we able to believe in faith? It's first, it first happens by seeing in faith. And in Hebrews 11, uh, 1 to 2, it, we get the definition really of faith. It says, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is, certainly, it is the cert certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Men of God in days of old were famous for their faith. And this is in the Living Bible Translation. So this is the encouragement for us is that many times that I, when I'm praying, I can see it by faith. Um, I'm praying for people and I can see by faith how God's going to transform their lives and who will they be by faith. And so that's the, the exciting thing is that the Lord will open our eyes of faith to believe that victory is possible. And when we see by faith that we can change, that the situation can change, that God can even uh, change a family, change a life, change a city, change a nation, then we have faith in, in the circumstance that we're in. And we know that, that it's only a matter of time. And why can we, how can we believe that? Is because God is faithful. In Deuteronomy 31 uh, verse six, uh, um, God was, uh, Moses was speaking this even over uh, Joshua. And he says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified of them for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And so the encouragement for, for even the heroes of faith in the past, uh, Moses and, and Joshua, is to be strong and courageous. And I want to encourage us, well, how can we do that? Is because we know God is faithful. If he's called us to do something, he's faithful to provide. If he says that victory is possible, um, the truth will set us free, then we can hold on and believe that we can be victorious, that victory is possible. My situation can turn around. My family can change. My marriage can change and turn around. There is victory in the name of Jesus because God is faithful. And Another way we believe in faith is that we need to speak in faith. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, it says, Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and we, so we also speak. And so this is so important as believers is that we have to guard our words. Remember the 10 spies that gave the negative report? They never entered the promised land, but only Joshua and Caleb because they gave that report in faith. They said, if God said we, this is our land, we can surely enter it. And I wanna encourage us, our words are so important. The enemy will try to use our words. He'll try to lie to us and say, no, 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 you'll never change. This situation will never change. This person will never change. No, we've got to begin to speak and declare God's promises by faith. Remember in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, death and life are the power of the tongue and those who l love it will eat of its fruits. So the enemy will try to use your words to speak death. Uh, it will over situations, but we need to remember God uses our words to speak life, speak his word. And as we speak God's word, we're going to see even our emotions change. We're going to see situations change. Come on. You know, I believe that if you begin to start saying that even over your spouse, even over your family, over your children, you're going to start saying, man, you're, you're such a, a beautiful child. Yeah, I just, 
I love your attitude and your heart. God's got such a destiny and a plan for your life. Can you imagine if we speak that over our children, the confidence that they're going to have, if we start speaking that over even our spouses, you know, um, then we're, they're going to change. Their, their face is going to light up and they're going to be so encouraged to see us when we come home. Can you imagine you go to your church and then you're saying, man, I love my church. I love this church. I love you guys. And all of a sudden, everybody's going to love to be around uh, one another. So Speaking in faith is so important. Doesn't matter the situation that you're facing. Pray in faith and speak in faith. The next one is hold up the shield of faith. Ephesians 6, 16, it says, taking up the shield of faith, which you're able to quench every fiery darts of the evil one. So the Lord is encouraging us. Take up that shield of faith because you're trusting and you know that God's in control. So it's going to hit and, and, and it's going to deflect all the lies the enemy's throwing at you. You'll never change. You'll never amount to anything. No, you're saying, no, I believe that the Lord is for me. He's with me. He's going to turn situations around. I'm believing in faith. God's going to turn things around. Come on, this is so important. And, and the last thing is about we need to be healed in faith. In James 5, 15 to 16, it says, And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord will raise them up. If, I, if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for uh, each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So when we pray, we're praying in faith. And we're believing that we're going to be healed in faith. And so this is so important in order for us to walk in our victory, we have to believe in faith, speak in faith, pray in faith, walk in faith. Come on. Everything we do as a Christian is actually by faith. And so we're believing in the, in the word of God and, is, and that he will come through for us. Okay, the last thing is we need to connect with others. So we need to abide in Christ. We need to believe in faith and see we are connecting with others. In 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, it says, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will be able to be qualified to teach others. And so in Scripture, we see this of Jesus, right? He raised, you know, reached out, um, made disciples, gathered them around, and he instructed them. He imparted to them. He prayed for them. He encouraged them. And that was an example for us of how we're supposed to live our lives as well, that we are supposed to encourage one another to disciple others. This is part of our Christian life. It's so important that we connect with others. God has not called us to be a lone stranger. Right? He's called us to walk with others. We cannot um, um, really live this Christian life alone. Um, what happens when we connect with others? We know that God is present. It's his manifest presence of God that comes to, when we gather together. It says in Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three gather in my name, I am there with them. Can you imagine that? I mean, we all experienced the lockdowns and, and we were all isolated and alone and we were longing for, for connection, right? But the moment we come together, there is something that happens. And let me tell you, I'm, I'm so excited that we can meet back together, um, uh, you know, face to face. Because when we pray together, when we fellowship with the, each other, when we're worshiping together, God's presence comes. And let me tell you, when his presence comes into a, a meeting, it's exciting. You never know what's going to happen. God's going to pour out his healing. God's going to pour out just his miraculous power. You know, he's moving. He's, he's ministering to people. And, and let me tell you, God is present. He loves it when we're fellowshipping together in his name. Another thing is that uh, there's power, right? When we're agreeing together, there is power. In Matthew 18, 19, it says, Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, I will be, it will be done for them uh, by my Father in heaven. And so when we pray together in agreement, God moves. Why? I mean, yes, we're called to pray individually to God, 
but something happens when we pray together with someone else. As we're praying together, God moves even more powerful. One puts a thousand to flight, two puts 10,000 to flight. There are some things, some strongholds, it's gonna take the prayer of agreement together with someone else so that we can get the breakthrough. We cannot pray for a revival and breakthrough for our city alone. We've got to pray with others. And so that's why I'm praying together with other pastors. It's so important that we pray together. Another thing is we are called to encourage one another and we get encouragement when we're connected to others. In Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, it says, and let us consider how to, we may spur up one another to, toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as we're the habit of some doing, uh, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You know, as we're coming toward the end, end times, some people are gonna wanna be isolated and alone. But the encouragement is we need to be together. You know, when I was thinking about this, um, I was just highlighting last month in, in May. And man, we had, you know, my friends uh, from, from India and uh, Penang, and we had a, a sausage sizzle for mothers. I uh, was so encouraged uh, you to hear Inface joining us, uh, you know, and, and connect with uh, Claude and Lydia, and, uh, you know, are gonna help us with their parenting seminar. And we had fellowships, you know, at, at the food court, and all of us were fellowshipping together. We had our, you know, uh, feedback uh, Sunday, and we fed you back pizza, and it was fun time together. But also, you know, I got connected with our pastors network in, in Preston Reservoir area, and we were praying together. Uh, I connected with my mom on Mother's Day, and she was telling me that she's off all her medication, and she's uh, pretty much totally healed. If Last year, she experienced uh, three strokes, and so, you know, it's amazing I was to hear um, what God was doing and healing my mom's uh, body and life, and, and, um, I got to celebrate my birthday with Jimmy and Annie and, and Pastor Mark and, and then also got to connect with my, my kids via Zoom and also my granddaughter, Haley, and also with the, the youth in, in the, the Zoom meeting. That was really encouraging, you know, even to see Lana joining us from, from Brisbane. And, and it was just a, a fun time. I was, I was just reflecting on the month of May I was encouraged and I was just thankful and I realized that there is no way that I could live this Christian life alone. I'm thankful for a spiritual family. I'm thankful for my own family. But as we encourage one another, my faith is built and I know that I can move forward because we have a strong family around us. And in Psalm 68 verse 6, it says, God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. You know, the enemy wants you to live alone. The enemy wants you to fight this battle alone because he knows that if he can get you alone, you're just easy prey for the enemy's attack. And so I really want to encourage us that the Lord puts us and connects us with others so that we can get the victory that the Lord has for us. And so the ABCs to victory is we need to abide in Christ, we need to believe in faith, and we need to connect with others. Let me pray for us. Lord, I thank you today for the encouragement of your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you want us to live a life of victory and you've called us to live this life of victory. You said those that know the truth, will, the truth will set us free. And I thank you, Lord God, that, that you gave us everything we need to live this victorious life. So today, Lord, we just pray that we would continually, Lord, abide in Christ, that we would believe in faith, and that we will connect with others. And I know that as we do, Lord, we're gonna live a life of victory. So thank you, Lord God, for your encouragement today. Thank you, Lord God, that you're with us and for us. And if you're for us, who can be against us? In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, thank you for joining us in our service today, and I'm I hope that you're really encouraged uh, to live a life of victory.
Uh, next week is our final uh, uh, topic on talking about the Holy Spirit to really seal this life of victory that the Lord has given us uh, a comforter uh, to walk with us, a helper. So bless you. Have a great week this week in Jesus. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Let your glory